In this video, I'm going to illustrate or demonstrate how to solve some basic trig equations. There's a lot of stuff going on on the screen, so I'll just take a moment to explain what some of this is. The top left is just the example problem itself. And on the top right, there's a panel which I call the solving tools panel. It's just a few things that are nice to have handy when you're solving trig equations. The top thing is the quadrantal angles and their corresponding ordered pairs. The second thing with the green text is the mnemonic a smart trig class, which tells us where the trig functions are positive and negative. And below that is the chart of the basic benchmark angles in quadrant one. The first example is two sine x equals one. And the basic premise when you're solving a trig equation is to isolate the expression that contains the x or, or whatever the variable is. So in this case, we wanna get sine x by itself. To do that, we've gotta divide by two, so that's pretty easy. We're gonna end up with sine of x is equal to one half. Now, one half is a positive value, and we know that sine is positive in quadrants one and two. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a little mini axis, and I'm gonna draw two arbitrary angles, one that terminates in quadrant one, and one that terminates in quadrant two. And then I'm gonna ask myself to figure out the reference angle whose sine is a half. Now, some students might have to look at the chart. Other students have memorized this. Hopefully you've memorized it because that's the quickest way to do it. But some students like to recreate the chart at the top of a quiz or something when they first start. And that, that might only take a few seconds. So if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But the reference angle whose sine is a half is 30. And reference angles go between the terminal side and the nearest x-axis. So I'm going to put a 30 here. And over here, it's going to go in this position right there. There are two angles for which the sine is equal to a half. And that is this angle right here, which is 30. And then there's this angle here, which is 150. And I guess it's worth noting that angles are formed in standard position, which means they start on the positive x-axis and they go uh, counterclockwise and they end at the terminal side wherever that might be. So this first one started here and ended here which is 30 and the second one started here and ended here which is 150. So the next issue we face is how to express these answers and there's there's four different ways actually. One way might say find all the answers between 0 and 360 in which case we'd be done. The answers would be 30 and 150. We'd write those and we'd be done. Those are the specific answers on that interval. But another question might say, find the specific answers between 0 and 2 pi. And that's pretty much the same idea, except they want the answers in radians. So I'm going to say pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Now, there's something called general solutions, where they don't just want the answers on a specific interval, they want all the answers that are possible. And this is a little confusing at first, but we're gonna do a few examples, and, and I think by the end you'll be fine. So I'm gonna start off by just making a set of axes. So I'm gonna start with the x-axis, then I'm gonna do a y-axis over here, and I'm gonna draw a picture of a sinusoid. All right, so intercept, max, intercept, min, intercept, max, intercept, min, intercept. And I'll, I'll just continue the pattern on this side. Min, intercept, max, intercept, min, intercept, etc. So now I'm going to connect these with a smooth curve. And this is just a rough sketch, so I, this looks far from amazing, but you get the idea. Here's our garden variety sinusoid. Oh, kind of missed the point there, but hopefully you will just do that. Uh, okay, so this would be y1 if we were using our graphing calculator, a sine wave. And there it is in orange. And now this on our graphing calculator would be y2, which would be a horizontal line at one half. So I'm going to sort of just approximate that. Now, we've got to find out, well, how many places do these two graphs cross? Where do the orange and blue graphs cross? One place is here. Another place is here. 
and in other places here. So this guy right here, you might not be surprised to find out is 30 degrees. And this one right here, which is sort of corresponding with it, it it's in the same position as this, uh, this first black point was. This is going to be 360 degrees later because it's one full cycle. And one full cycle of sine's basic shape is 360. So if we add 360 onto 30, we get 390. And this one is 360 away, but in the other direction. So we would start at 30, but this time we'd subtract 360. And now we get, for this guy over here, negative 330. So it's a matter of establishing this guy here as our home base, and then adding 360 once. Or we might add it twice if the graph kept going, and again and again. Or we could even subtract 360, or subtract two 360s. So one way we could express those answers, those corresponding 360s, is to say, uh, and I guess I'll use black here, x is equal to our home base of 30 plus 360 any number of times. It might be 1 360, 2 360s, it might be negative 360, so I'll put n, where n is an element of the integers. So this symbol here means is an element of, and z is the symbol for integers. So this is not just going to give us one answer, 30, but it's going to give us all the answers that just hop along in the same corresponding position, here and here. And if I kept drawing the orange graph, there would be another one and another one and another one. Well, we don't want to neglect the, the other answer, uh, 150. So I'll put, a little, I'll put a little x there. So... Coming down from the hump, there's an x, and then coming down from the hump, there's an x, and coming down from the hump, the hump there's another x. And this guy here is at 150. Now, the next x is one full cycle later for sine, and one full cycle is 360. So if I add 360 to 150, I believe I get 510. And if I go here, I could just subtract 360 to get this guy. And 150 minus 360 is negative 210. So we could express those answers as our home base of 150 plus 360n, where n is an element of the integers. Now that was the hardest part. If, if the same question were asked, but they wanted it in radians, you would just convert everything to radians. So I think while I'm in purple mode, I'll just do that. I'll say x is equal to 5 pi over 6. And instead of plus 360n, I'll say plus 2 pi n, where n is an element of the integers. And then I'll switch back to black, and I'll say x is equal to pi over 6 plus 2 pi n where n is an element of the integers. So it started out being really simple, but we actually did a lot with this. In summary, to solve a basic trig equation, you want to isolate the trig function that contains the variable. And then there are, you want to consider the four different ways that the question might ultimately be asked. Do they want the specific answers on an interval, or do they want all the answers? Do they want those answers in degrees, or do they want them in radians? Okay, so we're going to look at a second example here. And the second example is 5 cosine theta plus 5 is equal to 0. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is isolate the expression containing the variable theta. So I'm going to subtract 5, and I'm going to end up with 5 cosine theta is equal to negative 5. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Cosine theta is equal to negative 1. Now, whenever I get answers like negative 1, 1, 0, or undefined, I'm suspicious that it might be a quadrantal angle. Quadrantal angles, as a reminder, are angles that terminate on one of the axes. And if we think back to our basic definition of cosine, it says that the cosine of theta is equal to x over r. r is the radius of the unit circle, and that's always 1. So for the overall answer to be negative 1, 
as it is here, we know that the numerator here must be negative one, which means that x is negative one. And the only place where x is negative one is right here. So the answer is 180. Theta is equal to 180 degrees. Easy, quick. So we'll say that the specific degree answer is 180. We'll say that the specific rating answer is pi. Now I've got this issue of finding all of the solutions, the general solution for all the degree solutions. So I think I'm going to illustrate this again with some axes. So I'm going to draw the x-axis. I'm going to draw the y-axis. And I'm going to draw a cosine graph this time, which is going to be maximum intercept minimum intercept maximum intercept minimum and this is it going on this side intercept minimum intercept maximum intercept minimum so if i were to connect this we have something like this a rough sketch here nothing too fancy okay so there's just your your, your basic cosine graph and now i'm going to intersect that with negative one, which is going to be down here. Okay. And uh, not surprisingly, they cross right here. There's an intersection. Guess where that is? That's your 180. And this is the corresponding point for the next, the next intersection. And this whole thing is one full cycle and one full cycle of cosine is 360. And 180 plus 360, I have my calculator here, is 540. Or I guess we could just as easily have subtracted 360 or subtracted 720. So we'll do 180 minus 360, and that leaves us with negative 180 and negative 540. And so on and so on. If we had just continued this graph, there would have been more and more and more intersections of the orange and the blue. So if we want to do all degree solutions, what we're going to do is have a home base of 180, because that was the first one that we found. And we're going to say that x is equal to 180. And then we'll ask ourselves, well, where are the other ones in relation to this first one? Well, they're 360 away on either side. So we'll say plus 360 n where n is an element of the integers now if we want to do this in radians it's the same idea we just have to convert to radians so for this answer it would be x is equal to pi plus 2 pi n where n is an element of the integers much quicker much quicker than number one right